Essenberg and Balkinius. And the Stahlberg will continue. Yes. Okay. A cognitive architecture based on dual process theory now. Okay. So our goal, I guess, a fully automatic computational model that integrates concept formation, uh, reasoning of different kinds, both deductive and inductive, both symbolic and sub-symbolic. And um, we use a model of dual process uh, theory, and uh, not the one that uh, Kahneman used, for example, which contrasts fast and slow cognitive processes, not the one that Ron San uses, with, with uh, explicit and uh, implicit processes or knowledge. Instead, we distinguish between perception, uh, which we use for sensing the environment, and imagination, which we use for speculating about the environment. And uh, we believe that that distinction is very fundamental and important. And uh, if you don't uh, distinguish between perception and imagination, it can lead to, to delusions misconceptions of, of reality. It's actually a psychiatric condition, right? So we think that uh, it's, it's, it's not good for a, a, a person to have delusions, and it's also not good for an AGI system. So it's worthwhile keeping those two processes apart. Um, yeah, and our network model is a label structure. It's like a graph with, uh, with two edge relations. Um, and uh, we have labels on the nodes. It can be sensor, motor, min, max, delay, and space. And each node has an associated uh, number, which approximates its probability. And each edge, uh, each eye edge, has an associated number approximating its conditional probability. So here's one example of a network of this kind. Coffee and sugar, and then a min, or like an AND gate, uniting them. And um, so here I draw the, the, uh, the P edges in black and the I edges in blue. And um, we receive, um, the networks receive stimuli all the time, between zero and one. And this stimuli give rise to two types of activity then, perception and imagination. And uh, perception is propagated from, from these nodes, so coffee and sugar in this case, if they are activated, then this one will also become activated. And um, imagination is propagated through, along the, the blue lines, the blue arrows. So if we only get coffee, then we imagine sugar with a certain probability, depending on how strong that causal link is. 0.7 in this case. So we distinguish between the case of getting coffee and sugar and the, the, the case of getting only coffee and imagining sugar triggered by the coffee. Here's another network example. Um, so here are sensors down here, touch sensors, like an anemone tentacle. And uh, it will register uh, touch. And if it gets touched, it will retract using a motor. Here is another one with a space node. So this space node can remember uh, values. In, in this case, it remembers the sweetness uh, of an apple by putting this uh, the sigma, the, the, the mu here in a proper place. So if this, if this node receives uh, the same apple again, it will output one. So it's a memory of values. And we also have memory, a time memory, which is simply taken care of by a delay node, which will delay the signal by one step. So here we have, for example, lightning, and then a delay, and then comes thunder. So this, this node recognizes lightning followed by thunder. And of course, in this way, we can use, we can build uh, sequences of any kind. Uh, now I use this, these little dots for the delay nodes. So here we have the phonetic sequence apple, for example, denoted by this node. 
and uh, we can also uh, remember all kinds of knowledge like and, uh, other sequences here like 3 plus 4 equals 7 could be this one and um, yes okay and these that, that we also have mechanisms for developing these um, networks automatically. We can start with any network that we can call a genotype and then we have rules for developing a sequence of uh, networks called phenotypes by means of um, adding, deleting, merging and updating these memory structures. And this is what um, uh, one of the memory formation rules looks, looks like, or two of the rules. So this is based on, the, on, the, on this famous principle, if they fire together they wire together. So if we have coffee and sugar together, for example, here, then this structure will form, and these arrows also. And if we have lightning followed by thunder, then this structure will form, under certain additional conditions. So this alone will, these two principles alone will, will uh, cause the formation of this, uh, this network, for example. So. Here we have an apple, we taste, we remember the tastes, the sweetness, the bitterness, etc. of the apple, coded here and here. So this is the taste of the apple, and this is the sound apple, and we hear it. And if we eat the apple at, and hear someone say apple at the same time, then these two will be, become active. So once we have established, th so this structure will develop automatically, and once we hear the word apple, for example, we will associate to the tastes of apple, to the taste of apples, and vice versa, when we bite, take a bite in an apple, we will think about the word apple. So in similar ways, uh, we will develop um, uh, networks automatically uh, containing nodes representing apple taste, coffee smell, coffee and sugar at the same time, uh, lightning followed by thunder, and the symbol sequence, 3 plus 4 is 7, and the sound sequence, apple, for example. These will all develop automatically. And we also have a rule of forgetting or decoupling. So memory structures with uh, small conditional probabilities, like here, uh, yeah. if you see a red car and a black bird at the same time, this one may form, but since uh, you, they, they, they will turn out to be independent of each other, it will disappear eventually. The same thing here, if you swear and then there's a thunder, you hear the thunder, then this will also disappear eventually because it's a false, it's a false uh, causal relation. Okay, and um, we developed, took this one step further now and developed it into um, something that's similar to some kind of cognitive architecture with a sensory motor system, this genotype, and the, 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 the phenotypes that grow the way I described, um, which, which, uh, which is like a long-term memory. And then we also have a working memory, which is a buffer that can contain pointers to a small number of nodes of the phenotype. Let's say seven, for example. Okay, and then we also have some parts here which are uh, not implemented yet, but this one is implemented, a, rewrite, a rewriter, which will rewrite um, expressions based on the information in the long-term memory. So now I'm gonna show you some examples of uh, computations that can be made in this, um, in this uh, framework. So it can classify, for example. Then we have the stimuli here. We, we, we perceive an apple. And then we, we take it into the working memory, the attention operation. So it gets in, inserted into the, to the working memory. And then we have uh, a connection between apple, the taste of an apple, and the sound of an apple. And we use the rule association to activate this one. This happens automatically. And then we, we can use the speak module to produce speech from this uh, phonetic text. We can also compute in um, uh, mathematical expressions, like 17 times 3. We rewrite it as 10 plus 7, because we have this rule in our long-term memory. And we continue in the same way, using algebraic rules and some table entries, to obtain the final result. Uh, and we can also do logic. We can, um, um, yeah, we can rewrite. The, so it's a goal-driven system here. It's also like natural deduction inspired. But 
using rewrite rules all the time. So here we write uh, the implication as in this familiar way, and uh, yeah, we just continue like this, and eventually we obtain true, which means that this is actually a tautology. And we can also do associations. Uh, like if we think of a beach, for example, we may start thinking of uh, an ocean, and from the ocean, from ocean, we may go on to swim. If a swim, we may think of drown. So these are more like, um, um, yeah, associative um, trains of thought. Okay, so uh, a partial implementation exists uh, in in Haskell, and uh, it performs well on uh, some classification problems uh, from datasets Iris and Wine, and it can do extrapolation based on its own experiences. So typically, it would uh, guess zebra if it sees zeb there. And it can also do theorem improving in propositional logic and some simple mathematics. So this approach uh, enables us to integrate concept formation and uh, several types of reasoning. Uh, and a problem that we have is that the network uh, grows too fast sometimes. And uh, to tackle this, we, uh, we um, recently moved, we introduced uh, a notion of reward and moved from novelty-based concept formation to reward-based concept formation. And that uh, yeah, seems to be a good, a good move. OK, thank you. OK, you're a very efficient speaker, so we oh, have was fast. plenty of time for questions, which I'm sure will pop out of the woodworks. Yes, I knew it. Simple. Is the Haskell code available? Is the Haskell code available? Um, yeah, I think I can. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. So we, we just email you if we want to take a look. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. They want some more time to think about it. Okay, so okay. So maybe we'll have some time at the end for a few uh, more questions. Yes. So Eric is next. So the next paper is by Steinerbrink, Kutnik, Thorson, Nibble, and Schmidhuber. And uh, here's Eric Nibble to present.